Alright, as I promised after the Heimdall video, and I do apologize for the how blurry some of these pictures may look, but I actually, this is actually more or less going to be kind of a reload because the first video that I had made I accidentally deleted because I'm stupid, but that's beside the point. Anyway, and besides in the first video I wasn't really doing all that great a job, so give this a second retry on Lady Sif. <laughs> Basically Sif is, she grew up with Thor, she was a childhood friend of Thor. Um, she's a great warrior, very tom, and she's very tomboyish. She's kind of one of those girls that you know, believes that she can hang with the boys, or she is at least considered, according to her, according to the Warriors 3 and many other Asgardians, that she is just as good as Thor, the Warriors 3, and anyone else. And I would put her up there in terms of kick-assery, if you will, with Wonder Woman. I think Sif is a very kind of underrated female character. And I'm looking forward to the way Jamie Alexander is going to portray her in the movie. But I think one of the great things about Sif is that there is a rift that was basically caused between her and Thor because she couldn't understand, much like many Asgardians, why Thor loved mortals so much. And that ended up kind of being, shall we say, a stain on their relationship. Because, to, you know, to that end, you know, Thor almost practically wanted to be more on Midgard than he was on Asgard. And that, to a certain extent, kind of anger, you know, it angered Sif, but she also understood that this was Thor, she, could, she wasn't really going to change him. And it wasn't until the Heroes of Earth actually helped free Asgard that her and the other Asgardians start to have a little bit more respect for Earth. And in some of the recent comics, I believe, somebody can correct me in the comments on this, but she actually served alongside Thor's alter ego, Dr. Donald Blake, as a nurse in the hospital they worked at. And there's a scene where she actually helps give birth to a child. And it's in that mo and that's pretty much a very character altering moment for her. Because she because it's in that moment holding that baby that baby in her arms that she understands, you know, that to Thor, Midgard is just as important as Asgard because, you know, because of the fact that it's that whole, like, cardinal rule of cherish all life. And once, and, you know, and once Sif understands this, she also learns to understand Thor uh, just a tad bit more. And in actual mythology, if I remember, she is actually the wife of Thor. They are basically lovers. But I think one of the great, and she's even had a couple like one-shot miniseries and stuff, just like the Warriors Three. She is definitely, I think, a great supporting character for Thor. And what I love the most, as well, is the fact that she has a rivalry with Amora, the Enchantress, because Amora feels scorned that Sif managed to win Thor's heart and she didn't. So there's this great heated rivalry between the two of them. And that's pretty much all that I really got to say about Sif. On to the Warriors 3. Alright. Now, time to talk about the Warriors 3. Yes, I will be talking about Volstagg the Voluminous, or in this case, Volstagg the Enormous, considering, that, considering how fat that guy is. Seriously, how can he... Oh, his only weapon is like a dagger. He uses more as girth and beer mugs and stuff. But that's beside the point. And let's see. And of course, his his compadres, you know, fan, you know, Fandel, or Fandral, the dashing, and Hogan the Grim. These are the Warriors Three, and these are and these have been guys that were in a sense like Thor's bodyguards, if you will, since birth, or they were rather. Great adventurers, or like elite guards of Asgard. Yeah, that's funny. Asgard, elite guards. Anyway, they they have known Thor since he was a very, very young, you know, in his youth. Very young. And 
they have been Thor's closest allies, and they are probably they are probably the most interesting and most humorous ones because Hogan, like his namesake, he's very cynical. He's just he never hardly cracks a smile, but he's always ready to beat the shit out of someone at a at a moment's notice. Volstag, as I said by Volstag the Enormous, he's a guy who loves to eat. And he loves, you know, the glory and conquest, and he's always just so happy-go-lucky and cheerful. And Fandral, well, with a name like Fandral the Dashing, I'm sure you can understand, but for those of you that that really want me to go there, he's more of a cavalier-type character. He's, you know, he's, he's a bit of a ladies' man. And they... However, they have gained a great reputation in Asgard because they have fought... You know, the Frost Giants of Jotunheim, and, you know, they fought against, like, Ymir's forces, Curse's forces, and they are basically one of the main, like, four, main, you know, they're like one of the main three that, you know, charge head-on into battle, not only during the Odin sleep, but during many, during many, many fights. And it is because of these three you know that and it's because of these three these are and these three got very embarrassing very embarrassingly humiliated by the Hulk and Hulk versus Thor but I'm that's neither here nor there I think what's great though about the Warriors three is that you know they each have their own personality and yet there are even some casual fans that read Thor that know the Warriors three and that's good and I'm looking forward to, apparently from what they're saying, Stuart Townsend. It's either Stuart Townsend or Josh Dallas, who is going to be portraying Fandle. Um, Ray Stevenson from Punisher Warzone is going to put on a fat suit of sorts and play Volstag. And then Hogan the Grim. I cannot remember the actor's name off the top of my head. Shame on me. But he's going to play Hogan. And what's interesting is that... Fandral looks like Fandral. Volstagg kind of looks a little bit like like a taller version of Gimli from Lord of the Rings, which kind of throws me off a little bit. And Hogan... Well, Hogan looks interesting, let's put it that way. I'm, and no, that's not a racist statement. It's just, he looks interesting, period. And... The Warriors 3, have, and the Warriors 3, what is there to really say about them? Like, even for those of you that are casual fans, there's really not much to really talk about them. Or at least nothing that is worth noting, other than the fact that Fandral's a lazy man. I guess the one interesting thing is the fact that, you know, Hogan is not really an, you know, an Asgardian god. You know, but yet... You know, he is such a formidable foe and fighter that technically he is considered an Asgardian, even though he's not, you know, by blood an Asgardian. That's about the only, like, real interesting fact that I can throw out there that has any relevance. But I'm sure, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, that the movie is going to do a really good job of portraying the Warriors 3, or at least presenting them in a fashion that's going to be, you know, worthy of you know, worthy of the movie, but I will admit though, the next character that I'm going to talk about, I think you guys will enjoy. One of, I will be talking about one of Thor's earthly allies, or rather a guy who is part of the Thor Corps. Let's just sit on that for a little bit.